Motion concerning the financial report for the month of November. I'll make a motion to approve. Move. Second. Second it. We're ready for discussion. I have, uh, I'm going to say, I guess, several issues or questions to ask about before we uh, complete it and approve it or whatever. Started trying to look over the, the November report and trying to compare it to our 2022 uh, budget and try to see how they were meshing together. Uh, just, just as a matter of uh, technicality, uh, the second page of that November report where it shows the solid waste expense, there at the top, that solid waste expense is a kind of a typo. It says 132,283. That total is actually 1,392,283. So it's just a kind of a typo there. Uh, I'm, I'm curious about some of the items that are here that I want to, I guess, ask them about them in the November report. Uh, if you'll look on uh, the, the page of the general fund where it shows the revenues and expenditures. And in the revenue section, uh, account number 41200, housing authority makes a payment in lieu of taxes. Okay, they have for my 25 years up here. It's budgeted for $6,000, but nothing's been received this year. Now, I don't know if we're supposed to request it, who's monitoring it, or if they're just supposed to say thank you and here it is. But uh, it looks like if, you know, we ought to get the $6,000 unless it's been coded somewhere different. And uh, so I would ask the question, has it been received or are we supposed to request it? Does anyone? I'm not very fair. Uh, you would have to respond to that one for us. Right, I have to look into it, Sean, but I think it comes with our ad valorem taxes that come in every month. So I will have to do a little more research on that. So you, th you think it's included in that account? You said that was 41200, am I correct? Uh, yes. Yes, 41200. Um, and I'm, I'm curious, uh, there again, flip over another page. It's page 3 of 11 in that revenue section. Uh, actually, it's district court expenses. We had budgeted 95000 the, the account number there is 54038. We had budgeted ninety-five thousand dollars. As of November, we've only paid fifty. So we're forty-four thousand dollars under what we had budgeted. And I'm trying to think: Are we going to have to pay that, or is, it, is that something we got a big bill that we owe, or is anybody district court? I'm, I'm kind of curious of how our December is going to wind up at the end of the year. We're looking at November numbers. We got a month to go, and I think we do yeah. as we go. But you're saying, you saying now, I, I can see it's not real. It's, it's, maybe it'll be a big payment in December, maybe we do it. I'm trying to figure out, are we going to have a surplus or a shortage for the year end of 2021? Yeah, I asked about the surplus already. No, go ahead. No, I'm just saying I don't know if it was last month or month before, but I asked a question about this record and mm -hmm. us and how we... Um, did things and did we owe them or, you know? Uh, so anyway, I, I was going to say, well, I, I, I don't know who's supposed to look into that. Well, but. if I may, on the Act 156, which is the court cost, that there's a certain amount each month that has to be met, $16,378. There's been an abundance this year, surplus. We have made, there's been more money through district court this year than I've seen in my 18 years. So there will be a surplus because we have, that extra has to go through the state and then they trickle it back down through the city and the county funds. Okay. All right, so we probably won't, won't be out that much money. That's what it sounds like. Well, some of the things, okay. 
All right. Is there any more discussion on? One other item, one other item here, A&P Commission, okay, we had budgeted, and I'm going to say this has been done for several years, we budget that the A&P Commission, they, they like to build parks, and we had, have, I'm going to say, had worked out a deal several years ago where they were going to transfer a hundred grand out of that A&P money into our general fund to help pay for the park's upkeep. And I think all they've done is, is spend it on uh, the, the, that line item. It's uh, 52400 They They bought Christmas decorations. Those are great. They've done some other things, and that's great. But uh, the general fund ought to have that $100,000 transfer. I, I'm not sure who's responsible for making that request. Do we need a resolution? We have to make a request to them before they'll do it. <clears throat> okay. Well, it looks like that's part of the deal we set it up. It was in their budget to pay us. It's in our budget to receive it. So, somebody get her done. <coughs> so, okay. Well, the next meeting will be next year. This budget will be done. I, if, it's a, it's a, if it's an administrative request, I'd say the administration should request the I appreciate you doing that, but I want to, I mean, I've, I've tried, I've cut myself off about three or four times. I think we've convinced Mrs. Uh, Lauren that she doesn't work for me, she works for right. you guys. And when you guys convinced her of that, I've asked for several things. And I've not gotten the things that I have asked for, but I've asked for them through her. And then I went to, also to Mrs. Um, uh, Mrs. Donna Stewart. But I asked for some uh, for something a few a little bit a little while ago, and I was told that she didn't print it out because of the trees. I said we're in South Arkansas; we need to burn down trees. Cook trees are renewable resource. I said, well, did you send it to me by email? She hadn't done it by paper or by email. So some of the things that you're talking about, I can't respond to because she has access to the finances. I don't. If it's, I, in, if it's in the budget, you can properly request it to be paid. Mm -hmm. And I. If, you, if it's not in the budget, then. Uh, I'm not asking budget. for anything that's not in. I'm asking for reports. I'm telling you, I'm trying to keep up with reports. But she's convinced that she works directly for you. Okay. And so when I say something, I ask, for, I ask for a copy of certain paperwork. And she said that because of trees, she, what, she did not print out the report. I said, well, did you send me an email about it? And she had not responded to me by email or by that. And then uh, she went and met with the question I asked specifically. She met with uh, Mr. Franklin about Director Franklin about that question. And then they came back and gave me an answer verbally. But I'm better with paper. I'm a visual person, and so that's how I'm not able to answer this. Finances are not done on my computer. I cannot go on my computer and look at what she's saying. I have to ask her to print it or send me an email. And, and that's what literally happened. She's, my, my, she's seated there. My question is, and whether you need to get Mr. Fry to judge on it or Donna to whatever, it's in the budget. And if all you need to do is make a request, I ask that you make a request to transfer that 100000 from the A&P funds to the general fund. If I can't see we the... the okay, I, I, I was... I, I didn't... A okay. motion for what? Be able to do it if we're not able to do it. Can we ask Ms. Lauren to step up? Let's just ask her instead of going through around the bush over and over and over. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. I don't, I don't understand the problem, really. So my question is, how do we get the hundred thousand from the A and P Commission to the general fund? What's the process? Somebody has to request it from the AMP Commission, whether it be the mayor or Director Franklin. Okay. It's for parks improvement, yeah. and so one of them needs to request it from the AMP Commission, okay. in which I don't believe they meet in December, so they would have to probably do a special meeting for us to get it in before the end of the year. Okay. Now, I'm a little confused. Do the AMP request that they send it, or, or someone is going to power Someone from us makes a request okay. to the AMP Commission. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's all they need. You don't have a problem with trees, cutting down trees, nothing to do with trees. It's just somebody has to ask. Mm -hmm. 
if I can't see a current piece of paper to know what has been done until we, uh, until a meeting of sorts, then how can I judge what needs to be done? How can I project what needs to be done if I can't see it in time enough to make those projections? I can look at something, like you just looked at 0%, 0%. We got these papers Thursday, right? Well, I asked for the papers during the week. I asked to understand things early. And if I don't get them early, then I see them almost when you see them, right? Well, I'm here, every, I'm here daily. I'm here daily, and so I get an opportunity to ask those questions. I, I'm not getting the so response. So you, you make a request for the, for the reports or whatever, and you're not getting it. She told me that she, it was, she mentioned the trees, and that was what happened. And in that particular meeting, Mr. Franklin was there. He doesn't have to be called up for that, but I said, well, did you send it by email? And it wasn't sent by paper. It wasn't given to me by paper. It wasn't given to me by email. Not on that particular one, but on some of the reports that I've been asking for. I'm asking directly for specific pieces of paper to understand. I asked what you asked to. I said, where are we on the, what is our surplus for this year? I've asked all of those type of questions, I, and the year isn't over yet, so the surplus isn't ready. Yeah. Well, I just want to know where we are so we can know what we can yeah. do. I'd like to make a motion that we go into executive session. Yes, sir. I'll second. All right. What's the step for that? Yeah. yeah. An employee. Yeah. 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 All right. I know. I don't have a problem with what we're doing. I'm in agreement with. But if I know we can bring this problem in, sir, to take the time, let's establish the criteria now. I can't do anything. All right, but it is. A, we did that one. I thought I was doing the Yeah. Come on, Marvin. Let's go. All right. All right. Who's second? Those in favor, these voting down the line? All right. Those in opposed, these voting down the line. All right.
Discussion on the financial report. What actions were taken in the executive session? No action was taken. No action was taken. All right. All right. Is there any more discussion on the financial report? We had some corrections made uh, or some questions and no corrections. I don't have any corrections at this time. All right. Those in favor, use voting sign of I. Uh -huh. Those opposed, use voting sign of name. Eyes have it on the financial report. At this time, we're preparing for audience participation. If you'd be so kind when your name is called, will you step to the microphone? Please state your name and your physical address for the record. And you have three minutes. None? All right. No, 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 I said, are you ready? I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready. Mr. Smith. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I'm Mr. Brian Smith. Um, what I want to do is address three issues, and it seems like the um, people in the city have issues with my property on 223 and 213 North Street. But the first issue I want to address is there's a camper on our property. Now, we moved it off the front yard and put it on the side. But what I'm tired of is it's always one thing after another. Somebody complaining about issues of our property. Somebody complaining about our yard. Um, when my dad, before he retired from the city of Camden, we put that trailer. We had people are against us. And I'm just fed up with the complaints and the issues from numerous people in the city having that mobile home over there and along with the camper being over there. Now, that being said with the camper, the camper is over there temporarily. It's not there to be there forever. My friends just had a downfall and they're just there at the moment. But I'm also complaining about a lien on our property that the epinets on this land and they never paid it. They let the property set up. Now that lien falls on me and I'm having to pay that. I also paid $1,200 and hired a plumber and I was out of pocket for that. And I had to borrow money from my dad to get some plumbing done. And we had neighbors call the city on us again. Now we were, we were trying to do things by the code. I understand we got to follow the book, but the point is we're trying to get things done over there by the book and do work, but it just kind of breaks my heart that we got some people in the city feel like this about us. But that's all I'd have to say. I would really like all that to be addressed in the city and, and people look at us different. That's all I have to say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to make sure I hear this right. They own the property. Victory Church owns the house next door to us. They bought that. But the Epinets own the land 
beside, which is I own it now, 223 is where my trailer's at. 213, they own that as well. Okay, but you bought the property from the other net. That's correct. Okay. But the trailer I sit on, now that I bought from Kathy Horton. She used to work for the city of Camden. No, just the property. Just the property. All right, but they, they had some back taxes on that property. Yes, that's, I believe that's the parcel that has the lien on it. We can uh, entertain a conversation further after this to uh, see. Have you already paid the lien? Well, I, pa I paid part of it. Donna Stewart was um, aware of that day I came here and made payments on it, and I still owe a balance yes, on there. That's fine. All right, then give me an opportunity to, uh, to look into this one more time. Give me a chance. And I'm also, I want to say this, I don't, and I don't say much, and I'm not trying to step on nobody's so, but I. I'm not going to say no names, but I had the street department, somebody on the street department kind of caught an attitude with me because I was getting some work done over there. But I don't have nobody to help, and I don't expect it. And I'm doing my best to get that property looking good and do right. But when I have people nagging at me, turning me in, I'm not even bothering me. It makes me, I could have took $10,000 that I spent on that money and bought me a house. Mm -hmm. And what makes me fed up is nobody don't want to invest in no neighborhoods like that, but if we want to do bird edition, we want to do Cherokee. And I, I, I was fixing to just buy me a house, but I believe in our city. Yes, sir. But it disappoints me when I get that feedback, and it hurts my wife. She's, she's at the point she wants to move away, but I don't want to give up on our city. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ms. Stewart. Larry Mitchell, 649 Magnolia Road. I, I'm not going to be long, but I have a serious problem. Since they cut that wood down there off of Magnolia Road, I have coyotes in my yard, wolf, dogs, and everything. So what can we do about that? Because it's not safe for me and my wife to walk outside anymore. Uh, I talked with the chief of police the last time I was over here. He told me to get pictures. I put a, a game camera out there to get pictures. I bet you I have over 5,000 pictures. So is there anything we can do to, to come, somebody coming? Or uh, either y'all give me permission. I'm an old soldier. I can take care of them. But I don't want to go to jail taking care of them. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I, all right. if, if I might say, I went down and looked at Mm -hmm. and, and it was, they just left it. It was a clear clutch. Mm -hmm. yeah. But all of that, some of that was already down, old lots of property. Mm -hmm. And if, if, I, I can't speculate, I'm not a game one, but I assume that they had some things up in there. Mm -hmm. And they're going to hang around there now. Are they going to get rid of them? I just think we need to look at it and try to help him out and make a decision, but it's pretty bad. You aware? Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Good evening. Council, and Wendell Park, 1142 Herbert Street, Camden, Arkansas. I'm just here to say thank you for the generosity that you've done for me and the Public Works Department. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you, sir. That's it. All right. Thank you so much. At this time, we're preparing for the mayor's report. And on tonight, I'm going to call first uh, for, the, for, the an, for an annual report from our district of Camden, Washita County, Ms. Victoria Huggins, who is the chief court clerk. Please and thank you. Good evening, Honorable Mayor Lott, City Council members, ladies and gentlemen. As introduced, I am the Chief Court Clerk, Victoria Huggins, for the District Court of Camden and Washita County. And I would like to present our 2021 end of year progress report. I would like to begin by saying that 2021 started out with new changes under new leadership 
Honorable Judge David Graham, who was newly elected as our district court judge. As we were saddened to say goodbye in retirement to our Honorable Judge Philip Foster, who was such an amazing and caring judge and leader, we welcome Judge Graham with open arms. We are truly blessed to have such great leadership by both of these outstanding judges. With new leadership come some changes in our fines. Some were increased, such as our driving while intoxicated offenses. First offense was increased from $825 to $1,325. Now this also increased the third offense to $3,325. Some fines were decreased, such as no proof of liability insurance, decreased from $375 to $250, and the Possession of a Controlled Substance Act. First offense decreased from $620 down to $320. Some penalties were enhanced with jail time for habitual offenders of such charges, such as driving on suspended driver's license and no liability insurance. Fourth offense within five years results in jail time now, unless with the driver's license they do obtain the driver's license. Some penalties were diminished, such as no jail time ordered for first-time shoplifting cases if the items taken were less than $100. 2021 also brought with it sadness as changes were made in our staffing. Our matriarch, our queen of the court, Chief Deputy Clerk, Ms. Gloria Fountain, retired after an illustrious career of poised dedication for over 33 years. Ms. Fountain is not only the persona of elegance and hard work she brought with her every day, a kind Christian heart and uplifting voice. We were saddened also that Deputy Clerk Ms. Rachel Cross had to resign due to health issues. Ms. Cross is also one of the most professional, dedicated ladies I've ever known and has such a beautiful, caring spirit. These ladies are truly missed. With these exits, this brought in new personnel and generated promotions. Ms. Teresa Herring was promoted to Chief Deputy Clerk. Ms. Herring is also the Civil and Small Claims Clerk, as well as handling many other tasks with efficiency and enthusiasm. Not only does she take on something new and learn it quickly, she also has a talent for technical issues and always steps right in to fix whatever the problem may be. Ms. Geraldine Poole was promoted from our part-time employee to full-time deputy clerk. Ms. Poole processes all of the court citations, which involves many different procedures, as well as efficiently handles other duties. She never turns down a request to assist wherever the need may be and always with such a smile. We hired two new employees, Ms. Janet Quarles and Ms. Janice Pettit. Ms. Quarles was hired by the county in 2020 through a COVID grant as the checkpoint entry employee. Ms. Quarles not only fulfilled that appointment, but she offered to help us in whatever assistance she could be, which led to her being hired as a full-time deputy clerk. Ms. Pettit was hired as our part-time employee and came with years of knowledge of the court system and computer system as she retired from an illustrious career at the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office for over 30 years. Ms. Janice brings with her wisdom, love, and guidance. Our probation department is ran by probation officer, Ms. Debbie Brown, and her assistant, Ms. Brenda Parker. These ladies not only process probation, they initiate, set up, and coordinate all of the payment plans, community service, anger management, wage assignment, and alcohol education. Ms. Debbie and Ms. Brenda are the first you see as you walk through the doors and these two greet you with love and eagerness to help. They are such a blessing. And as you know, 2021 also brought the pandemic with it. As it continues to wreak havoc, it has mandated many changes to our method of operation. Our probation officer, Ms. Debbie Brown, who is with me tonight, has stepped up to not only fulfill her duties and as we lost our COVID grant checkpoint employee, she volunteered to coordinate the COVID checkpoint for each court date. We hold court sessions each month, eight court sessions each month, plus we host East Camden Court once a month, so this is quite a task. I would like to say a special thank you to Ms. Brown. Her dedication to step up and do any and everything to get the job done is very much appreciated and, is, and admired. And as I stated, she not only heads the probation department, she completes numerous duties for our district court and always with such professionalism and dedication. She's an inspiration and a lifesaver for me, and I'm so grateful for her and this amazing team. As I mentioned before, we still implement the court date COVID checkpoint procedures. These procedures consist of before entry into the building, masks are required for the defendants, which these are provided. 
The defendants are required to complete the COVID questionnaire and temperature is checked. The Washtenaw County bailiffs, under the direction of Chief Bailiff Carl Stewart, are so generous in assisting Ms. Brown with organizing this procedure each court day. Chief Stewart and his staff have a focused work ethic and bless us richly. We have a video doorbell for daily operating procedures. We are able to communicate with the person at the door and can offer assistance in whatever they need. If they require inside accommodations, we do have glass windows at almost all of our stations now. Cross training our staff has been an ongoing goal. In 2021, we have made much progress in this area and plan for everyone to be completely cross trained in the near future. I take much pride in this District 14. I have the honor and privilege each and every day to watch this wonderful group speak with, greet, and help the public with such caring and such zeal. Another change we're possibly looking at is our Honorable Judge David Graham is running for circuit judge with the election next year. If he is elected, an interim judge will be appointed by the governor and will take position as district court judge in 2023. This appointed judge will not be able to run for the full-time state district court judge race, which will be in 2024. Now I'd like to provide the yearly reports for receipt collections as well as other pertinent year court information. I provided these reports in your packets, plus I have a couple of extra copies if, you, if you're needed. The first report is the total of collections up to December the 5th. This total is $873,966.59. The first page breaks down what the court clerk office collected, the police department, probation, and sheriff's office. And the next page I printed out for you, I just kind of wanted to point out something that the credit debit card was was just implemented in May 20th of this year by the Washita County Sheriff's Office. It's only at the window right now, but the plan in the near future is to have the online payment plan. And this is really an asset. A lot of people inquire about it and we're really working on getting that where they can pay online. The total civil cases, civil small claims cases filed this year were 283 plus there were 25 filed in the last week. I think everyone's trying to hurry up and get their lawsuits filed. The total cases that were filed were 9,003. This is your Arkansas State Police, your City of Camden Jurisdiction, Forestry, Game and Fish, and Washita County. That's quite a lot of cases filed. The warrants that were issued up until December 5th were 3,081. Now those served out of that were 1,182. Those quashed, which that those were recalled, were 2,876. A lot of this was due to the pandemic and being there were no um, jail availability. These warrants, they would call, it's kind of like we had an amnesty pretty much all year long. They could call and they needed their warrant reset. It was a very much available this year. The total cases that were disposed of, which these are the cases that after court, the judge's docket are entered in. These consist of bond forfeit, guilty, not guilty. There's a breakdown that shows you how much each and every one, but that was 12,319 cases that were disposed of. On the total community service credit applied, in which this had a big dent in it this year due to the pandemic, it was $27,316.75 collected. The county shop and public works had the same exact hours turned in, 473. There were a lot at the jail that did community service, 900 hours. Other, that's your victim's uh, assistance or a church or nonprofit organization that they're allowed to go and complete their community service. Arkansas State Troopers and Highway Police Citation totaled 2,477 as of December 5th. If there's any questions about any of these reports, I'd be glad to answer. If not, in closing, I would like to thank our Honorable Mayor Julian Lott for his leadership, dedication, and genuine care for our wonderful city of Camden, its citizens, his staff, and our entire work family. We truly appreciate all that you do for us, Mr. Mayor, and the zeal and care that you put into it daily.
I would like to thank each department head for all the help and encouragement they have provided me this year and always. They always take time to answer my question and are always eager to assist me in all of my many situations, Miss Lauren, <laughs> with such kindness and professionalism. I would like to express a big thank you to Mr. Michael Fry for his expert assistance in our, as our illustrious city attorney and city prosecutor. He is always eager to assist, advise, and answer so many of our questions on a daily basis. We truly bug him quite a lot, and he never, ever minds doing research, always has a smile, and makes sure we have the information we need. Mr. Michael, you truly are a blessing and genuinely bright in our days. City Council members, I would like to take a minute to thank each and every one of you for your time and dedication to our fair Queen City and its foundation. The decisions you vote on, I know, are preceded by much thought, much research, and many prayers. The decisions you make govern our citizens, and I know this comes with hard work and pride. Our respect and gratitude to each one of you is greatly expressed. As we go into this new year, I'm so thankful for my job and for each and every one of you. I ask God to guide us into the future, remember the lessons of our past, and with much zeal and pride, dive into the present with all of our might. Appreciate your team because teamwork makes the dream work. Right, Marilla? God bless you. Have an amazing and blessed finale of 2021. And Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Thank you so much. A wonderful report. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have any, you have any comments, questions about so far? Thank you so much for a remarkable year, and thank you for bringing us that report. At this time, we're calling for Mr. Ben Wooten, our code enforcement officer, for an annual report of code enforcement. see how Chief Woody feels now. <laughs> in, in our staff meeting, he's, he normally does his report after Miss Vic. And, and it's always like that every Monday morning. So I, I see how Chief Woody feels. <laughs> she always brings a delightful spirit to our council, uh, to our uh, staff meetings. Uh, to our mayor, council, and citizens of uh, this great city of Camden, uh, I condensed I condensed my report quite a bit because uh, of a lot of resolutions that I'm, I've got on the agenda. So I won't bore you with a lot of numbers and that type of thing tonight, but.